Hello the internet and welcome back to my channel. Today on the bench I have an Apple Monitor 2. This is from 1983 and it's the second monitor Apple ever released for their computers. Now the very first monitor was the Apple Monitor 3 for the Apple 3 series. Now that monitor is a bit bigger than this one, it's the same CRTs, more or less the same specs, but it's a bit bigger and it doesn't sit very well on the Apple II machines, whether it's the U2, 2 Plus, 2 e it's the same, same case dimension. So in 1983 they released this monitor, which is a smaller form factor for the Apple II series. This is a 12 inches monochrome monitor and apparently was manufactured by Sanyo, even though I thought they were manufactured by Samsung. We'll take a look inside. If you know something, just leave a comment down below. I have exactly the same monitor in my collection, which I restored years ago before this channel was born. Now, why is this monitor on my bench today? This monitor belongs to the Museum of Computing of Swindon and I have recently repaired an Apple II Europlus for them and we need a monitor to make it work and display to the public. Now we have this monitor here, it's untested and I know these monitors have a good selection of refresh capacitors inside so I didn't want to just plug it up and see whether it was working or not. So I took it home and the plan is we'll take a look inside, we'll take care of the reefer capacitors, we'll test the monitor, see if it works. If it works, happy days, we'll give it a good once over and make sure it's working ready for the museum. If it doesn't, hopefully we'll manage to fix it. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, more on that later. But now enough me talking, let's take a look at this monitor. Right, uh, sometimes I forget about a little bit of safety disclaimer and before we begin, please bear in mind that CRT monitors are dangerous. The CRT itself is a big capacitor, it can store energy even when it's unplugged and the high voltage driving the CRT can go up to like 20,000, even 30,000 volts on, uh, on bigger ones. Now this is a smaller one, it's probably a bit, a bit safer, but Please stay away from CRTs unless you know what you're doing. If you decide to do that, you do that at your own risk and this is not a tutorial. With that out of the way, let's open the monitor and let's take a look. Here we are inside the monitor. The first thing I'd like to show you is the um, swiveling system of the whole monitor. It's the whole CRT, which is actually pivoting on some hinges here. It's, it's quite amazing if you think about it. Right off the bat, I can see that this is another low voltage monitor like the Apple IIc monitors I worked in uh, this video here. The reason I'm saying this is that main syscam in here is going to this little board which has some filtering capacitors and the fuse. And from here it goes into these transformer. From the transformer, I've got these red wires which are carrying AC going into the motherboard. And on the motherboard, I can see a bridge rectifier. So the monitor is powered by the transformer and it's getting low voltage AC into it, which is getting rectified. Uh, chances are it's gonna be another 12 volts monitor like the Apple IIc ones, and then it's uh, powering the whole monitor. So how can I say, working on CRTs is not my favorite thing, but when I see there is a big transformer and the monitor is basically low voltage, they feel a bit less scary, let's put it that way. On this side of the chassis is the reason why I decided not to power on this monitor to see if it's working. We have one, two, three, four reefer capacitors. And a little story here, when I purchased my own Apple Monitor 2 a few years ago, before this channel was born, the monitor was working, but when I opened it up to take a look, all the reefer capacitors had blown up already. <laughs> So someone must have turned it on at some point, so the smoke, but you know, these are just filtering capacitors. If they're not there, the system is still working. It's just you get noise coming back to the mains network. Now I've got some replacements for these reefer capacitors. So before I can think of doing anything to this monitor, let's replace those reefers.
And yes, I remembered right, these says Samsung on it, so I'm assuming the whole monitor is manufactured by Samsung, not Sanio. I don't know, maybe there were different versions. Maybe the US version is Sanio and the European one is Samsung. I have no idea. If you do, leave a comment down below because I'm very curious. The mains filtering board is back in place with the new capacitors and all the wiring is back in place. So I'm ready to test this, to power this up. I got my Apple IIe out and it's running XPS diagnostic on my floppy emu so we can test the picture framing and everything. Obviously this is a monochrome screen so there's nothing about colors here. In three, two, one, go. We do, yes, amazing. Obviously I need to adjust the brightness. Let me do that straight away. Well, good news, it seems to be working fine. From uh, what I can remember from this monitor, I mean, this is a pretty bright environment, but it feels a bit dim, not very bright. So maybe it's just a bit tired, but uh, it is, Pretty sharp, again, it's just a basic monochrome monitor, nothing fancy about it. As you notice, the controls need a little bit of cleaning because they're a bit scratchy. So there's definitely something we can do about that. I've got the contrast set at maximum right now. You know, I wouldn't expect to run this monitor with anything turned at maximum, unless it's the um, input connector, which is a bit dodgy as usually is on this monitor. It needs to be soldered, it jumps a bit sometimes, but it's fine, it doesn't, it doesn't affect the picture quality or the brightness. So I think it's just an old monitor <laughs> and that's all the monitor can do. The picture is relatively centered, I don't see any issues with it, it's pretty, also pretty stable. I don't see any jittering or anything, you know, that might happen with old capacitors and kind of stuff, so, so far so good. Now how can PCBWay help me when it comes to a CRT monitor? With these, for example, this is a PCB for a ring tester, which is a tool I intend to use on a future repair of a CRT monitor. With the ring tester, I can test the flyback transformer of a CRT monitor. I found this project online, I purchased the enclosure, all the components, and PCBWay kindly manufactured the PCBs for me. To have the PCBs of your project manufactured, the process is very easy with PCBWay. All you need to find is the Gerber file of your project, upload them on PCBWay.com, and the process is more or less automatic. At the end, you can choose the postal service, the turnaround time, and the PCBs will be delivered at your place. Now, if you follow this channel, you know that I've been using PCBWay for many of my projects and I've always been very happy with the manufacturing quality, so I do recommend them for all your projects. Take a look at PCBWay.com, the link is also down below in the description. Let me thank PCBWay for sponsoring this channel, their help makes these videos possible. But now, let's go back to the Apple Monitor 2. I got my multimeter set to AC and the probes are stuck into the uh, output of the transformer going into the motherboard, so let's see what voltage we're getting. We got 20 volts and if I remember right, this is the same of the Apple IIc monitors, so I would assume that this monitor is running at 12 volts DC after the rectification, which is probably more or less what you're getting after 20 volts rectified capacitors and everything, it's probably 12 volts uh, for the time, it's probably fine. Now behind these wires there's a little linear voltage regulator and that's why it's installed on uh, a bit heatsink, it's not very efficient and it's connected to the rest of the board with like a standard fan connector I would call it. It's kind of normal to see back in the days and uh, I'm assuming that this voltage regulator is getting the voltage generated by the main supply section and uh, regulates it to 15 volts with chances is it's what this board needs to run. Got my multimeter in DC mode and on one end, on one end of the uh, regulator, I should get the regulated output, which is 15.2 volts, is what I'm expecting. The middle pin is ground and the other pin is the input, which is 23.2. It's kind of low for a 20 volts AC coming into the board, but that's what the regulator is getting. So I would say let's discharge the CRT, uh, remove the board, take a look at all the soldering and everything. Maybe we can check a few capacitors just to you know decide whether we want to replace a few or 
maybe they're totally fine. Then we can clean those trim pots, solder the uh, input connector, the uh, RCA input connector, which is always always fails on these machines, more or less. And uh, then we can give it a clean and this monitor is good to go. When you're working with CRTs, if you really decided to do that, always remember the CRT is a big capacitor. So even when it's unplugged, this could be still charged. So always discharge it and it needs to be discharged between the anode cap here and the metal ring around the CRT itself. Do not discharge it through the electronics. You, it might damage the electronics. Oh, <laughs> okay, it was still charged. This doesn't discharge by itself. Some uh, some tubes, they, they tend to have some bleeding resistors, I guess, somewhere, and they just discharge literally like seconds after they've been switched off, but not this one. So <laughs> remember to discharge this little one. Okay, well, I don't see anything obviously wrong on this board. I can see that the capacitors are branded Samsung, and uh, I was totally right when I said this is a Samsung monitor, as even the board says Samsung. I haven't checked, but I think the CRT is also Samsung branded. Now, I don't want to recap this board just for the sake of doing it. I mean, it's, it's never a bad idea, let's put it that way. But on this one, I just want to make sure it works. I completely appreciate a new capacitor would extend the life of this monitor. But I think for now, I'm okay with these capacitors. As I did before, I think it was with the Apple IIc monitors. I'll just uh, remove a couple of these capacitors, just test them and see if they're in good health or not. I think as a start, I'll remove these two capacitors here. That's uh, 100 microfarad. This is a 10 microfarad. They're close to a heatsink, close to the flyback, so maybe it's the warmest place on the board. I don't know, I like this too. So let's remove these two and let's test them. These capacitors don't seem to have leaked. I do see a little something on the PCB. But chances are these could be manufacturing residues, but I don't know, let's test them. This is a 10 microfarad, it reads exactly 10 microfarad and the ESR is pretty low as well. And this is a 100 microfarad, it reads 96, which is totally in specs. Uh, remember, electrolytics are plus and minus 20% and ESR is very low at 0.31. So again, I really don't see reason to replace these two. Let's check another couple and then, to be honest, I can assume that this board is good to go. This is a 1000 microfarad, again it's 907, so this is supposed to be good up to 800 microfarad, so it's within specs. And the ESR is very low for a 1000 microfarad, so this is also very good. Let's check another one and then I think I'm okay with these capacitors. This is a 100 microfarad, it reads almost 100 exactly, and the ESR is also very low at 0.46. So I think I'm happy with these capacitors. Don't get me wrong, it's probably not a bad idea to just replace them all, but on this occasion, I'm happy with this. The picture looks fine, it's very stable. All the capacitors I've been testing uh, have really, really good readings. So for now, I think I'm fine with this. Now, since I'm here with the soldering iron turned on, I think I'd like to just reflow some of these joints. I don't really see issues with any of this, but I think it's a good idea, especially, you know, the bigger ones, the flyback transformer, the bigger capacitors, whatever is getting warm, if it's some bigger resistor, I'll take a look. Uh, it doesn't hurt. And uh, if I see something weird, I'll, uh, I'll show you. But so far, I haven't seen anything broken or cracked or anything like that.
Now what happens with these RCA input for the composite video is that the ground of the signal is uh, ending up on this metal ring here, which is supposed to make contact with the rest of this metal work where the actual ground signal is taken to the PCB. Now, what usually happens is that this little soldering blob that you see here, uh, sometimes, as in this case, it breaks. So what happens is there's no continuity between uh, the ground of the signal and the ground circuitry on the PCB. So all I'm doing is just, uh, you know, touch with my soldering iron here, add a little bit of solder and re-establish the um, connection. There you go. And as a final proof that this is a Samsung monitor, this is a Samsung picture tube. So everything is Samsung in here. I'm going to apply some of these dielectric silicon grease under the suction cap and this is to prevent any ingress of uh, dirt or dust or moisture which could cause uh, arching. It's unlikely on this very small monitor but I do like the fact that it leaves this kind of lubricated gliding surface under the suction cup. It's good for even for future serviceability. It makes installing and removing the suction cap much easier because it's uh, lubricated basically. Okay, it's time to give these a final test. Hopefully I haven't broken anything and it will work exactly as before without the scratchy pots. In three, two, one, go. Okay, well, yeah, that's probably my tinkering with the vertical hold. So let's give that a go. Well, I guess there's not much to be done. Let's double check the um, geometry of this monitor, but it was pretty good uh, when we tested it earlier on. So I'm not expecting that to need any adjustment. It's difficult to see on camera from this angle, but it looks totally fine. It doesn't really need any adjustment. So I guess uh, we can uh, close this case and then uh, we'll just spend a couple of minutes doing a little comparison. Right, as a final test, I brought my own uh, Apple Monitor 2. So my curiosity here is to compare the brightness of the two monitors, because that one that we just done looked a bit dark to me, but maybe it's just my impression. Now, I don't want to split the video signal between the two, because uh, I assume, I'm not sure about that, that the video signal strength will split between the two monitors, so chances are both monitors will end up darker, even though then the camera will compensate. But what I'm gonna do instead is uh, I'm gonna turn one on first and I'm going to lock the exposure on my camera. So when I then uh, move the uh, video input from this monitor to this one, the exposure is gonna be the same. Then in post-production, I'll just put them side by side and that should be, I guess, you know, the most reliable test that I can think of. And comparing in post-production, it looks like the monitors are identical. So it looks like the monitor we fixed is doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing, which is good news.
And we reached the end of this video. The monitor is working and is ready to go on display at the Museum of Computing of Swindon. Not with an Apple IIe, but with an Apple II Euro Plus, the one that I fixed in this video. The monitor was working already, but still it's a good idea to replace those reefer capacitors, which would explode at some point. And it was nice to go through uh, all the components and give the PCB a once-over to make sure that everything was in order. So that's it, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, as usual, I'd appreciate a thumb up down below. And uh, also, if you want to leave a comment, I try to read them all and I try to reply to them all. If you have any comments, any feedback, it's always welcome. If you like this type of things, consider subscribing to this channel. And I hope to see you again soon here on this channel for my next videos. For now, thank you very much. Have a good day and goodbye. Bye-bye.